All right, so who, who, who am I? I'm your presenter, Isaiah Desta. Um, I work here at 4Geeks Academy. I run the YouTube channel for the USA campus. Um, and what I wanted to do here was give, do an overview of the state of the environment. What does it take to get a job today? And more specifically, what do we have to do in our resume in order to, to, to succeed in that way? And it's actually not obvious. That's why I wanted to fixate on resumes because I think things have changed dramatically. They really have. So, so let's get into it. So what I did was, is I, I got together with our, our career support team um, and, and I, I reached out to them and I said, hey, can you give me roughly four to five uh, resumes of, our, of students of ours who have done really well? And I wanna get those resumes together and I wanna compare them to each other and see what things I can find that are the same throughout all of them. And I, I came away with some takeaways. Obviously I have them listed here as one, two, three, and four to protect uh, their anonymity and uh, identity. So, but yeah, so let's, let's get into it. So first thing we gotta do is understand the landscape. So something has changed with the ease of application to, to certain jobs. A lot of, uh, imagine like you're a recruiter, right? And you see you're getting hundreds of applicants within hours even. It yeah. totally changes the way you have to interact with with the, the what would you call it? The, the population of people applying. Because th there's no way that you can practically go through all the applicant applications and make like a, a high quality analysis. So things are changing, right? So, and I put here a screenshot of, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this on LinkedIn where it says, yeah, you're, you're applying to a, a position, right? And it says, this application has been posted one day ago and there are over 100 applicants, see how you compare. And it's like, oh yeah, well, so, so why try? And I wanna discourage that view and I'll, I'll explain how we deal with it. So this is understanding the landscape, part two. This led to the need for something called the applicant tracking system or ATS. You probably hear the term ATS thrown around. So let's define it here. An applicant tracking system, ATS, is a software that manages the recruiting and hiring process, including job postings and job applications. It organizes information about job seekers and makes it searchable. So we were, we were trying to imagine the perspective of the recruiter. Well, now let's embody that perspective. I find that I, I'm the recruiter now, <laughs> so we'll get, in, we'll get into character. I get 256 applicants to this job posting within the first week of it being uploaded. I have a job that includes other things outside of re re reading resumes. So of course, I'm going to need to deal with this problem somehow. Now, one way to deal with it, and this is like right when this started to happen, this is probably how it got dealt with. Either you read through as many as you could and gave up on the others, or you didn't read it all and kind of gave up on the process and totally pursued another way of seeking out and hiring candidates. But Software was created because wherever there's a problem, software can be created to solve it. Well, I should say not always, but often. Um, and in this case, they did that. So basically what they do is they have a dashboard. Any recruiter has a dashboard that they call an ATS where they get to observe all the applications and they grade it based on. And that's where we go to the next slide and we talk about how do we optimize our resumes to pass the ATS? So what are the implications of this change? Right. So we have now a recruiter with their dashboard that are seeing your resumes and are grading them based on some kind of criteria, right? We're trying to figure that out. So let's, let's address it here. Your resume will be filtered by software before it can even arrive in front of a human decision maker. Thus, you must design it to pass the ATS software system. So here you see a little uh, snapshot I found uh, online, basically giving an idea of what a recruiter might be looking at in this process. So what they get perhaps is like, let's imagine this is a, a discrete individual and these are their skills right that design graphic design photoshop mobile marketing landing pages and quality assurance now because the job description has those things listed it's going to be looking for that in your resume it's going to want to be seeing whether or not you're matching the keywords when it does that when it does that search over your resume right like taking all the words in your resume and then and then reading it out what it's going to look for is People with the best score would be people with the most terms on the resume that match the job description, right? Okay, so uh, that's pretty straightforward. I'm sure you, sure you get what we're saying here. So what does this mean? Like, how does this affect our behavior? Okay, let's go forward. So 
your resume for any given role should be tailored specifically to that role. Quality actually is more useful than quantity in this case. You hear that often, but let's get into it. Why? Otherwise, your resume will be discarded before it can even be read. So there's an asymmetric advantage to putting in just a little bit more effort and more time per resume. Because let's imagine, right? Let's say, uh, I, I don't really want to do that. I want to increase the surface area of luck, you say. So you take this one resume, let's call it your default resume, and you apply to an unbelievable amount of positions, right? Let's say just you're button mashing, right? Easy apply, LinkedIn, easy apply, easy apply, easy apply, easy apply, and trying to get it out to as many people. I saw YouTube videos where guys were talking about, I put in 400 applications, I put in 600 applications. And maybe like with a stroke of luck, you'll hit one, but it's just really inefficient and not necessary. And it's just, it's, it's misguided. A better, and the reason it's misguided is because you have to imagine, right? If each recruiter is seeing a list of all the applicants to a position and you didn't make the, the what, what would you say? If you didn't tailor it for that role specifically, which would look like something like looking at the job description and then matching keywords as precisely as you could, then everybody else who did that thing is going to be prioritized in that recruiters, in that recruiters, uh, what would you call it? Job search, right? <laughs> Um, so in almost every environment you're going to be in, you're going to be at 50th percentile or lower. And obviously when people are looking for job, I mean, when recruiters are looking to hire employees, they're picking from the top, you know, percentile, uh, performers in, in the keyword match. So you're never even going to be scratching the surface of getting, getting, uh, paid attention to essentially. So what, what ends up being the case is you just save a lot of time creating tailored resumes because they run that ATS, right? They, they run the filter over your resume. And what they discover is you have a ton of the keywords matching. Now, uh, let's, let's slow down a bit. Make sure you don't lie. Like, <laughs> what you, you don't want to be just matching keywords exactly. Like, you want to prove that it's actually true, ultimately. Obviously, integrity is very important here. But if you do possess the skill, make sure you put it there and maybe omit things that are not directly uh, related. Right. If they're tangentially related, it might be smart to, to keep it in. But anyways, you get the idea. Create a default resume that we can call the master resume. And then each time you make an application, you tailor that resume. Now, there's more things to be done, and we'll discuss those in uh, later slides. So uh, another implication. Now, now, we've discussed ATS, but it's important that we don't get too caught up in that. Right. Like th this is still a human. Th there's still human elements to be considered here. And as I say here, the human element still matters. Once you have made it past the ATS, your resume will be evaluated by a human decision maker. In order to excel at this stage in your resume, you must do the following, right? Demonstrate why you would excel in this role. Consider creating YouTube tutorials demonstrating competency and the specific skills that were listed in the job description and embed a link to it in your resume. So I actually did this in the past where I, I would have a skill or I would have a project listed on my resume, right? And what I would do is I would say, hey, imagine a recruiter's perspective. They've been reading resumes all day. It's kind of boring, you know, like, I mean, come on. It, even when you look at your own resume, you're thinking to yourself like, okay, black and white sheet of paper with things on it. And if it wasn't about you, you probably couldn't bring yourself to read it. It's, it's not interesting. So what if you spruce it up a bit? What if upon the clicking of a skill, right? Almost everything's digital now. Very, very infrequently, you're going to be handing somebody your, your physical resume. Let's say they click a link, right? And they, they are taken to a YouTube video of you demonstrating that exact thing you were talking about in your resume. I'm telling you, if I was a recruiter, that would stand out to me. And I can speak for myself. That's, that's literally how I got in this role here. Um, like I literally published YouTube videos doing a thing for Geeks Academy recognized that and offered me this position. So I, I just want to say, like, it's important to, to keep that human element in mind. Impress the person who's going to ultimately be reading your resume. So another thing is contribute some personal elements that invite their intent attention. Discuss your drives and, when possible, describe why you're enthusiastic to join Company X. Right? Like, make it clear that not only do you have the skills, but you have the attitude and the disposition to go forward and succeed in that role. Okay. So fourth, uh, your resume is important. However, it is only one necessary component of a successful approach, right? Once you have applied, 
make an effort to increase your chances via a few practices. Um, and these are here. Reach out to the recruiter directly. Some research may be required to discover this. So on LinkedIn, when, when you apply to positions, sometimes it will have the, the recruiter that's gonna be responsible for handling this process listed there. And in that case, it's super straightforward. Sometimes it's, it's not gonna be that straightforward, but what you can do is you can go onto LinkedIn, go to a company's uh, um, LinkedIn account and search for people. They have a tab called people and you can search based on recruiters and you can find them. Now that also applies uh, on the second point here. Connect with members of the staff in the role that you're selecting. Now I put in parentheses here and I wanna, I wanna state this ahead of time is be mindful here of boundaries and etiquette. Like don't reach out to them and be like, hey, help me get this job. No, that's that's impolite, like that, that's not proper procedure and it's it's gonna give you a bad reputation. So better a, a better thing to do is just genuinely be interested in them and you should be genuinely interested in them, it shouldn't be for show. And uh, you'll find this easy to do because if you wanna work at the company, you're gonna be curious about what your job might be like in the company. And let's say you're halfway through the, the onboarding experience and you can be like, hey, or I should say the interviewing experience, hopefully the onboarding experience. <laughs> and you can say, hey, uh, it seems like we're gonna be colleagues soon, so cool. I, I was just wondering like what advice you had for me. Like I, I can't wait to get started here and I just wanna put my best foot forward. Anyways, happy to connect. Click, send the message. Anyways, it's just a thought, right? Like there's plenty of procedures you could implement here. These are just two bullet points. Two ideas. I would say reach out to the recruiter is less of a like wily idea that you really want to do that. Okay, so in summary, let's let's try to capture the the ideas here that we want to keep in mind moving forward. So, what does the landscape look like, right? The volume of applications skyrocketed and necessitated the use of filtering systems, aka APS. Right? Now, what are the implications of this? The resume must be designed to pass the ATS, or you don't even get a chance. So let's start there. <laughs> you have to be keyword matching to the job description. That's the beginning and end of this, this whole thing. We can begin and end there. If, if your resume is not ATS optimized, you have zero chance. You're not gonna get through. Second, tailoring the resume is necessary in order to do this. You should increase the quality of each application. Take time, make sure your keyword matching within bounds, right? Like make sure you actually have that capability, but that needs to be the focus. Next. Include elements of yourself that appeal to the human as well. This part still matters. Once you get past the ATS, which is a necessary prereq, right, a prerequisite, now you're interacting with the human, you still have to compel them. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't go too far in this regard. Like, don't make a super unorthodox resume that absolutely breaks, you know, this rule and that rule and it's super outlandish. That, that, I think that's perhaps a little bit... Um, improper in this one case, because remember, we are in a professional environment after all. But what you can do is, you know, sprinkle a little flair, you know, like per perhaps you have, I don't want to call it a radical philosophy, um, but, but maybe you have something that's motivating you, right? Like a drive in, in your in your personal life that's motivating you to succeed in that role. And perhaps you should mention that because, you know, people who are motivated to do things they, they work a little harder. They do things a little harder. And maybe they want to know that you have that kind of work. Ethic. Okay. Take matters into your own hands. Reach out directly. This is very important. You know, like we're crafting a resume and that's their first impression of you. But there's more things you can do, right? You can reach out to them directly. Like I say here, you can make an impression that's more than just a piece of paper and the words on it, right? Okay. So that was, that was it for the presentation. I want to open it up to discussion. Um, we can do a, a bit of a Q&A. I had some pre-made questions that I think would be interesting to ask if you guys want to engage in a dialogue uh, about them. Um, but I'll, if you guys have any questions, please, please go forward. Uh, Alain, you're, yeah, you're Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's mm -hmm. um, one, one question for me is uh, about this, this video mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing for me. You you think it's a good good idea to put on on YouTube? Mm -hmm. I am not a YouTuber. I am not a influencer. I am not mm -hmm. that kind of guy. You know. Yeah. I prefer that uh, an interview with even being being in recording for the employer mm -hmm. to to put a video on, on YouTube. Yeah. I know. I I don't. It's my first time. May, uh, making this this kind of thing so 
what do you think if I put the video in a in a third third party server or something like mm -hmm. that? Okay, so are are you looking to publish anonymously so that you yeah. you don't? Oh, okay. So I have a few suggestions before before you're so sure that you don't want to publish live, like you don't want to publish it to the world. There's a few things you can do if you're nervous. So one thing is you can record without your face. You could screen record what you're doing, and you could do. Uh, actually, this would be kind of interesting. You don't even have to speak. You could write a script about what you're doing and have an AI read it and have an AI read it aloud. Um, now, this would obviously be you're providing less and less proof that it's your work specifically. That's part of the reason why you want to incorporate your own your, your own self. That's fine. But you want to incorporate yourself in the videos because it demonstrates to them, at least optically, right? Like it, it appears as though it is your work in that one case, right? So. What? You know, but remember, that this is just like one way to go about it. If there's a way you can demonstrate proof that you do this thing very exceptionally, like imagine, right? Imagine you have a project and your link is directly to the GitHub repository where you built it. That's that's good proof, too. That's good proof, too. I find that it's not as visceral. And you, you most certainly should include your GitHub repository. Like, let, let me be absolutely clear. That should exist. And it's a fundamental part of, of like making your resume stand out in that in that way. Um, but you know, it's a sprinkle a little cool stuff on top yeah. never hurts, right? One thing one thing I've heard from a lot of industry professionals who actually work in the field, like a, a few weeks ago, you guys can watch this on the YouTube channel. Um, we 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 had this presentation with this company called Globant, Globant, uh, G L O B A N T. And uh, basically what they do is it's, it's some third party thing, but but they have a lot of uh, people that work for them that work for other companies like Meta and, and Google and, and stuff like that. And uh, and what I kept hearing over and over again was contribute to open source, contribute to open source, because it is perfect proof that you can do actual collaborative work in the way that you'll be doing in a work environment effectively. Yeah, that's as, that's as close that's as close to the right answer as you can get, right? So extrapolating that point, by the way, you should definitely do that. This was more of a focus on resumes, but as far as like how to prepare optimally for the job search, I can't recommend open source enough, like contribute to open source. This is very important from everything I understand. But if we can distill the core idea that exists in contributing to open source is it is most like what the job might be like and it's proof of work effectively, right? So we take that same idea and we say, how can we show that we are actually capable at the things that are on our resume and, and make it impact the person, right? S seeing how many contributions you have on open source is, is one way to do it. Showing them like a, a YouTube video with 1000 views of you doing a thing that's helpful to others is another way. Like, and it doesn't, it, whatever, 10 views, whatever, have it be published that it exists. Now, I mean, it, if you really are, you know, caught wanting to be cautious about it and not upload your face, you can upload on YouTube privately and then you can share that link. You, you can make the setting mm -hmm. such that anybody with the link could view it. And then you could share the link obviously with, with the recruiter and they could watch it that way. So, so yeah, you, you can do it pretty anonymously, an anonymously, not, uh, another question, another question yeah. is, sorry. Uh, no, it's about the TCS, TCS. Uh, ATS, ATS, ATS. Yes. okay about mm -hmm. about this ATS. Um, the keywords is like the mm -hmm. the language program the technologies so yes but not only so this is what you want to do now you, you should do deeper investigation on your own part so that you can internalize this idea but the basic idea is is let's say you're a recruiter, right? You're a company with a team of recruiters. The way you've set up your ATS system to work is you, you've you had it crawl over your job description, try to take into account all the things that could exist in your job description, which could be things like skills, experience. It, it's anything identifiable, right? It, it just think of it as, as like a, uh, a node, right? The, an identifiable node. It's trying to evaluate it and then uh, account for it. It's basically like accounting software. It's like, uh, imagine, yeah. imagine the, the, the words are tokens or, or, no, no, no. 
imagine the the words are dollar values for things and you're accounting for it in like a google sheets document right like you just want to keep track of all the words now what it's doing is it's running that against your resume and checking like what percent match are we seeing right not not every word but the important words which would be skills experiences uh i don't know yeah projects team, yeah teamwork mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah, like definitely languages. Languages would uh, be something they're looking for. Uh, years of experience, frameworks. Uh, whoa, what else? What else? What else? Anyways, in each case, you should you should try to, to max, maximize the match as far as you can go without lying, right? And that's that's where you draw the line because that that'll get you caught up. And also, we should just have integrity. You know, like it just. I feel like that's a good principle, even if it even even if it was effective. You guys want to hear a funny story? You, you may have heard this. So many years ago on Twitter, there was a guy who blew up because he got like 60 job offers from like Meta, Google, and, and everybody was like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? What he did was, is on his resume, he put like in white so that you couldn't see it on his resume. He put like the most outrageous resume you've ever seen, like Nobel Prize, uh like 4.5 gpa or whatever like he just put whatever crazy high achieving thing he could think of right and the ats obviously read it and humans couldn't read it because you know obviously uh and uh yeah and he just got a ton of job offers and, and he was qualified by the way he just put things that made him exceptionally qualified all throughout that the people couldn't see right so anyways that's an example of something that you shouldn't do. It'd be very naughty, but you, I'd almost, I'm almost be curious if, if a recruiter wouldn't say, you know what, this guy, he's got some, he's got that engineering spirit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a little bit, uh, um, what, what would you call it? He's a little, he's naughty. a troublemaker, yeah. but <laughs> they have something. They have something. And, and you know, it's really interesting because he's not lying to a person. No, because the person doesn't read Nobel Prize winner, doesn't read all this nonsense, but it's it's kind of maneuvering cra craftily. Is that a word? In a crafty manner through a system, right? He found a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what I would say is, don't break rules like that, but be clever. Like if if you find a way to frame something in perhaps like a creative way, obviously don't like just straight up lie. But you know, be clever. Be like. Well, the, here's one way to present a thing. Maybe I present it this way, you know. It, it's part of the game, right? Because as an example, in the job description, they're going to put mandatory things that they will definitely hire you if you don't have, right? But what they're trying to do is making make it so difficult, right? They're trying to increase the barrier to entry or at least make people fearful to apply effectively. But ultimately, when you get in the job, there's almost no chance you're going to need the things in the job description. They're just trying to find the kind of person, obviously you're gonna do some to a majority of those things, right? But not all of them. And what they're trying to do is trying to, they're trying to find the kind of person who would do that sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, hold on. Um, I write to David Garson. I mm -hmm. think Say again. David David Garson is asking David Carson? for forgetting to the I sent the link to him, but oh is he having trouble is he having trouble getting in? I don't know, maybe. They grab me from Slack. Hmm. I think it's a, a little late for him, no? Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Hector, how you doing, man? Okay, <laughs> I scared him away. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So I have I had a question prepared that I thought I think maybe we can discuss that I, I think will be interesting. So first let's start with a proposition okay do you accept this premise there are companies that are looking for employees do you accept that premise yeah okay 
And are there employees seeking employment? Yes. And they're not perfectly matched, right? Because if they were perfectly matched, theoretically, there would always be a perfect match up to the point that it could be satisfied, right? Like whichever side had more people, right? Let's say there's more people than available jobs. You'll have some level of unemployment, right? But if there's if there's more jobs than there are people, then you'll have a certain degree of, of unfilled jobs. Yeah. Ne necessarily, yeah. right? But let's assume, uh, let's assume, let's assume there's an equivalent amount of people and jobs, which is probably not true. It's probably off by some amount. But for the sake of the discussion, let's say that it's equivalent. In a perfect world, you would have 0% unemployment and 0% uh, unfilled positions, right? Because everybody would be perfectly allocated into the job that they should be in, theoretically speaking, right? Now, we're not even close to that. Like, in fact, in the United States, it's actually a major problem. We have a labor shortage. Like, for the jobs that we need to be done, I, I should say, of the jobs that are available, like, they're having trouble filling those jobs, right? Which is weird, because also there's people looking for jobs that are having trouble finding jobs. It almost seems to me that the problem is is kind of systematic. Like, we have a problem with the matching of people. We don't have human allocation done properly. Like, I can't tell you how many times now, like being in this field and, and working in it professionally, where I hear from recruiters, like, dude, it is so hard to, to get good people, like to get people, period, to get the attention uh, fr from the people that we want and then actually, you know, get the process rolling. It's, it's difficult. Like, it's not a good process. So if that were solved, theoretically, things would be a lot better. So I guess the question is, what would a world look like where there was perfect matching, where like everybody just got the job that they were supposed to get and every company got the employees that they needed, right? Like, that, that's really interesting. And the reason I think we should consider it is, is because it's theoretically solvable. Like with, with an amazing piece of software, with an amazing stroke of brilliance, somebody could solve this problem, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I think I think so, man. Like um, I don't and now I don't know how to do it. So I can't like say mm -hmm. this is exactly what we should do. Maybe the, in a little tiny world. Maybe Yeah, that's man. But this dude, can you think about how much better the world would be? It would be unbelievable because I mean, yeah, it just it would be incredibly efficient. Like there's companies right now who need people and those people they need, they can't find, but exist right now. They, they exist in the world for them. They just can't find them. They literally can't find them. And it seems, that seems so ridiculous. Like, I, you would think that our society would be further advanced, right? <laughs> Come on. Uh, like, aren't we to the point where yeah. we can get better human allocation? And also, maybe this, I, you need to argue, argue for it in different ways. Like, if I were speaking to a teacher, I would say, uh, the edification of our of, of our students in the workforce like we, we want our students to go on to have successful careers and this is good and then you you talk to a venture capitalist and you're like think of the value in this <laughs> like the the corporate value if, if we had or i should say the nation's economic value uh, think of how our gdp would rise right if if we had perfect human allocation of labor um that'd be cool but but yeah just <laughs> just that's something that has always interested me. It's really interesting. You know? mm -hmm. Hey, Jimmy, uh, did you have any questions or have anything you wanted to discuss? Hey, hello, everyone. Hey, uh, how you doing, man? Uh, I I thought it was uh, presenting some examples, maybe. Mm -hmm. you so, so for Sumis. Yeah, the, the thing is, is that I, I wasn't able to speak to the students, so I didn't like I, I didn't want to display their names, but I can I can tell you about some of the resumes like because I didn't I didn't want to display their personal information, like where they went to school and their name and their address and their number and <laughs> all that stuff. So if you had like some some questions about resumes, I could I could even give you tools, perhaps um, like some useful tools here. Let me let me put a link in the chat. Uh, Jimmy, have you ever heard of Flow CV? 
Sorry? Have you ever heard of flowcv.com? No, I've never. Okay, I want you to take down this link that I've given to you in the chat. If you if you want, you should go ahead and click that and go check it out. That's a resume builder. It's completely free and it is fantastic, Jimmy. It will guide you from like the very beginning to the very end. And that's actually how I built my resume. It was successful. Elaine was nodding. Do you, do you use Flow CV, Ellen? Yes, I use Flow CV. Yeah. Um, it's really helpful. You can yeah. you can even uh, storage some part and descriptions uh, of your resume and put it in active or inactive. Um, they you you can uh, deploy a new resume in, in seconds. Only uh, forget this part and put this. It's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another another good way, Jimmy, to think about it is wh when you when you ask for an example resume, are you trying to think of like what are the things I should put on it that would look good? Uh, yeah, the thing is that I am trying to to enter into the data science field because mm -hmm. I didn't study that. And that's the reason I, I reach uh, four gigs. Mm -hmm. So I am starting to study data science and mm -hmm. I, I was looking for some examples, uh, maybe uh, uh, I, I heard about maybe the portfolio that some people uh, put links from the portfolio to- Yes, to absolutely. Portfolio. Absolutely. So, so have you joined the the Four Geeks Academy bootcamp uh, formally? Uh, no, I am in the process. Okay, cool. So, what what you'll see is w when you finally get into the career support funnel, right? Like you get your own career support representative. What they're gonna do is they're gonna look at your resume and make sure that like you're creating a very strong default resume, so that from that point you can tailor it for each specific role. But if you wanted to know precisely what to put on it. It would be something like the things that you actually know, or like all the things that you you possibly know, right? From from the coursework. Let's say you learn 100% of things. I don't I don't I, I I'm not like really involved with the with the data science course, but I know that they learn Python. Obviously, is a language, right? They they learn certain frameworks and they have certain portfolio projects. Like I know for a fact that when you finish the course, you're gonna have your your capstone project, right? Your major project that you present at the end. That would be a perfect thing to highlight on your resume. And when you're applying for a specific role, you don't want to include everything you learned in four geeks necessarily. Maybe you do. Maybe that role, you know, is it, like it makes a lot of sense for you to include all those things. But really, at that point, you want to be tailoring your resume. So say, Jimmy, like you were to go uh, onto LinkedIn, right? And you're applying to a position. Let's say it's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, a machine learning engineer or a data analyst or, or something. Look at that job description, then see what skills you have like that you actually possess that you've learned here at 4 Geeks Academy. And then try to put as many of those on that specific resume before you apply. That would be an example of like a perfect resume. In that. I share my link, Ali, Jimmy. Awesome. Yeah, you guys, you guys should definitely connect. Oh, I use I use Flow CV. Yeah, yeah. Put mine. I use Flow CV uh, to made it, so you you can see it. Sorry, Alain, what did you say? Oh, I use Flow CV to make my my LinkedIn profile. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I share you my link in, in, in the chat. Okay. Yes, I send you an a message. Well um you asked for examples of you you can see um my link or or search in, in my in my how can I say contacts is is right there? Uh, yes, I, I was 
I am looking for it's it's a uh, with where it says keep it simple and keep it effective. Yes. Oh, let me see. Oh, I actually am subscribed to this channel. <laughs> oh, I, I cannot hear you, Isaiah. You're muted. Whoopsie daisy. No, <laughs> but uh, what I did here, uh, Jimmy, is I included the, the YouTube link to the channel. So I, I recorded this um, and and when we're done here, you can you can rewatch. Um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, okay, I, I will rewatch. Awesome. And uh, Jimmy, I get the sense, I get the sense that perhaps like you don't know where to start on resumes. It, it, would you say that's true? Uh, yes, I, I am. It's because I am like changing because I studied mm -hmm. electronic engineering and I. Fantastic. I am <laughs> <laughs> By the way, studying, studying, studying that is like, a, f a fantastic prerequisite because what what that's going to tell somebody is that he he has the kind of mind that will make him successful at engineering right of any kind right because the kind of person who's good at engineering is typically good generally at engineering like yeah i guess you have to learn some software but you have the basic ability or or the what would you call it the 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 latent capacity for the thing so Okay, so let, let's talk about nitty gritty facts then. I don't, I don't have a, an example on hand that I can comfortably share, but what I will say is this. Start with something like your projects, right? Because you, you, you have no work experience in this, would, is that true? Uh, I have work experience, but uh, as electronic engineer in the field, like uh, in the optic, optics field uh, but programming uh, i don't have experience okay so your your work experience is very good it's going to be good to include but i wouldn't put it at at the top of your resume that's not the first thing i would want to highlight the very first thing i would highlight if i were you would be to highlight the projects that you create in the four geeks academy boot camp and the projects that you create independently so imagine your name exists at the top right we have jimmy Romario Juarez Ramirez. Did I get that right? I'm a gringo. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have your name at the top. You have your title, software engineer or data analyst or, or data engineer, whatever you, you decide to pursue specifically. Right? Right beneath that, there's an argument to be made. And this is like speculative. Like you could test it out. You could A, B test it. You'll hear a lot of that, right? Uh, where you could put your personal statement, like what drives you. I wouldn't recommend necessarily putting that at the top. I think if somebody wants to learn about your personal statement, maybe they should read down in your resume a little bit. The very first thing I would recommend you put, Jimmy, is your portfolio of projects. That would be the very first thing I'd put at the top. That's what you want to highlight. You want to be like, I've done this thing. Here's a link to the GitHub repository. Jimmy, do you know what GitHub is? Yes, I... Okay, go. I know, I know. All right, awesome. Awesome. So yeah, just like an example would be, here's a direct link to the GitHub repository, or here's a YouTube video of me doing a demo, or here's the exact website it's hosting live. You can use it right now. Those, those you need to make a massive impact on them with that right at the start. The very next thing I would put is a list of skills, right? So here's keyword galore. All the skills that you can say that you actually understand and know, I would put it there. Um, and examples obviously would be like all the things you learn over the course of the of the data boot camp. But then also I would throw in electrical engineering. That that's a fantastic skill. Like maybe like per job application, the further it goes, it strays away from anything involving that. Like it, it wouldn't be as useful. But any anyways, so what do we have so far? We have your name at the top, we have projects, and then we have skills. Right under projects, you could put work experience, you could put education, and really it's up, up to your preference, right? Because the ordering 
affects the ATS, maybe. I can't say for sure if it does. Um, but we know it affects like the human reader when they're reading it. Like the, the order of impression is going to be top to bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to highlight the things at the top that are the most impressive about you. Jimmy, are you bilingual? Uh, I study English, but I, I didn't finish. I can speak, but I'm not very fluent. Got it. Okay, so then that here's a good thing to talk about. So because you're not very confident in, in your language ability, that's something to totally omit, right? Like it's keeping it off the list is probably smart. Like it's good marketing. If you feel vulnerable in that way, it's not something you want to you want to be highlighting, right? Like obviously, like don't try to mislead if somebody asks you directly, like, are you are you good at this? Can you do this? You know, you know, you, you want to speak about that carefully because you don't want to get into a role and then it's tricky for you to handle. But um, but yeah, that would be an example is like. We're, we're selling ourselves at the end of the day. That maybe that's a crass way to frame it. But ultimately, that's, that's what we are doing here is we're appealing to, you know, we're appealing to a recruiter in the hiring process. So we want to make ourselves as desirable as possible. So in your case, because you have experience, but it's not direct experience, probably the thing you want to highlight is your direct, excuse me, are your projects that are ex like perfect proof of the skills that you're going to list right beneath that. And then right beneath that, you could uh, advertise your, your ability, like the things that you've actually done in the world that show you have work ethic and technical capacity. 